Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God for that. Thankful for the blood. All right. Take your Bibles tonight. Just got a little thought the Lord gave us this afternoon. Just really a, a preventative maintenance. Amen. And uh, just a good reminder. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Talk to you about the church that left its first love. I know we preached out of this before. We probably preached out of everything before. It seems like that by now. But uh, it's a good reminder. Amen. Just to remember. And most uh, church folks know probably where we're going, but that's all right, amen. God, give us this thought for tonight just to brush up on and to remember uh, what, what, what we're doing, why we do what we do, amen, and the reason we come, the reason we continue to preach, the reason we continue to go and do the things of the ministry is because of Jesus, amen, and we can't never forget that. I tell you what, you can get in so many programs and get to doing so much stuff, and there's nothing wrong with programs. I, I, I was thinking today, uh, you ladies meeting, hey, man, and, and, and us guys getting together, it helps the fellowship of your church. It helps your church. Hey, man, I, you all seem to have a, a, a bounce in your step tonight. Hey, man, so, and I, I may be fooled. I may have just seen something. You may be really tired, but uh, it just seems to be working, and I appreciate y'all meeting like that. That's a good thing to do. We're a family. We ought to meet. Hey, man. And fellowship, uh, we we all we meet three times a week, but we ought to meet sometimes and just uh, do stuff like that. So I appreciate y'all doing that. Revelation chapter two, verse number one, talk to you about the church that left its first love. Revelation chapter two, verse number one says, "Unto the church, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these things: saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks." I like that verse, that walketh in the midst. He's talking about the seven churches. That's what the seven, the, the, the seven golden candlesticks represent, and that's talking about Jesus walking in the midst of them. Amen. I like that verse because uh, we got to have him walking in the midst. I mean, without that, we, we, we have no hope. Without that, uh, uh, you know, we, we don't get hung up uh, and necessarily on presence all the time, but we got to have presence. Got to have presence, amen. He's got to be in our church. Verse number two says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. He's letting them know. He said, you're a discerning church. You pay attention to what's going on in your church. And he said, this is crucial. And he said, it's a good thing. That's what he's, he's commending him there, commending them at this point. Verse 3 says, and hast borne and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. So far, so good. He says, verse 4, though, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Think about this for just a minute. I'm going to pause right here for just a second as, as we're reading this, but it just dawned on me. Isn't it amazing that if you've seen that church and you come up on this church in our day and you said it's a, a, a great church, it, Jesus said about them, he says, I know thy works, thy labor, thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. They don't put up with foolishness. They don't put up with evil. He says, and thou hast them which say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars. They are a discerning church. They're a church of patience, means they're patient with the people that are growing, I believe. They were, uh, they were evangelistic. They were going out in the community. They were helping. He says, hast born and hast patience. For my name's sake thou hast labored. So they're doing everything for the right reason. But then he goes on to say, now a church like that, you think, man, that's one I'd like to be a part of. As a matter of fact, I feel like that's, that's partly what we are here. But isn't it amazing? He goes on to say in that very next verse, nevertheless, I have somewhat against it because they have left our first love. You wouldn't think that. If you've seen this church, you'd think they hadn't left their first love. They hadn't forget where they come from. They hadn't forget why they're doing what they're doing. But it just goes to show you how it, it, it isn't that. And I, I think this is really a mild rebuke, but now it can lead to worse, as he shows us here in just a minute. But at this point, I believe it's a mild rebuke because I don't think they even did this intentionally. It's not like they said, well, we're going to do all this stuff and we'll pretend like we're doing it for the cause of Christ, but we won't really do that. That wasn't their heart at all. It's just like us. 
you get to going through the motions and you just kind of, you're just going. And a lot of times you'll, you, you'll sit back and you'll forget why you're doing what you're doing. And you'll get tired and, and eventually if it continues to grow, though, what will happen is that will fester in you. And it'll, it'll, and that, and it'll turn, and it, sometimes it can turn into bitterness, it can turn into laziness or whatever, but you keep going like that too long now without understanding and remembering where you come from and remembering who saved you and remember who you're serving. You can get to going through emotions and it'll just be like a normal practice to you, like something that you do. It's just like getting up and going to work. It's just we get up and go to church on Sundays because that's what we've always done. I don't want you to get up and go to church on Sundays because that's what you've always done. And we got to remember as to who we're serving and always keep him in the forefront. And that's what this church did. So I don't believe it's a church. It's isn't a church that is a bad church. This is a great church. I believe they was a crowded. I believe they had a lot of people from the community. I believe they had great leadership, but they left their first love. They left her for what they done was this. They took him for granted. That's what we do a lot of times. Hey, we do that in our relationships. We do the husbands and wives that have been married any length of time, and I don't know exactly what I'm talking about. You take them for granted, and therefore you left your first love. And if you allow that to go on too long, it will breed other things that are not good in your life. And that's what happens, I believe, here. And I believe that's why he's telling them. It's a warning. Like I said, a mild rebuke. He's not saying you're a horrible church. You've went so far off the deep end, it ain't funny. That's why he's trying to get them before they get too far, because I'll show you. He says, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do thy first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. So it's still a good thing. You hate the things I hate. He says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord saith unto the churches. What the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity tonight again to stand. God, help this just be a, a good reminder for us that when sometimes things get tough, and we do this, Lord, so we're guilty too, just like they were in this day. God, help us to understand and realize that why we're doing what we're doing, that we're not, we're not doing this just for ourselves or for the church itself, but we're doing this for you and because of who you are and what you saved us out of. And we have to keep on going. We have to show people now a lot more than ever before. And the only way to really make that light bright as it can be is not to leave our first love, to remember to keep the main thing the main thing. God, I pray that we can do that. God, just to brush up tonight to where if our hearts begin to fail and start to go off uh, just a little bit, that we can turn around and get back. back. And just like you said, just repent and turn back and say, God, I'm sorry that I have left my first love. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, these seven letters are from Jesus, if you didn't know that already, that he wrote here to the seven letters, as I said, and the seven golden candlesticks represent the churches in the Laodicea church age. Like his word found in the gospel, these dedicated 66 years, or these, uh, 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 these dictated 66 years later on after this uh, to uh, John writing on the Isle of Patmos. What are these seven letters? Letters to churches then in existence. Letters dealing with church problems of all time. Letters showing the church in prophecy. The active church with trouble within. And as we say, there are no perfect churches because there are no perfect people. And it's very easy to get off just a little bit. And I say, if you look at this church here, uh, the church here uh, to the church of Ephesus, I believe the one he's writing to here, and lets them know all these things are good that they do. They're able to discern evil. They understand the false preachers and the false prophets. Here's what it would, here's what it would uh, translate into our day. It'd be like if somebody got up here and started preaching out of something that wasn't this Bible. Most everybody in here would be able to say, it would catch their ear and say, something about that ain't right. Amen? And it would be up to us and me to rebuke them and say, you got to stop that here. We don't put up with that nonsense. 
You know, we preach the Word of God here. If you're going to preach out of the Word of God, that's one thing. And that's why I'll guard this pulpit until I, uh, until I die or until I leave here. I don't just let anybody in this pulpit. Now, all we can get is what we know and the information we get. But I will never allow somebody to get in this pulpit that I don't feel is going to feed you in the right manner that's not going to preach you out of the Word of God. So they were a church that was like that. They were faithful in all those areas. They've done the right thing, and I don't want to even say for the wrong reason, but they've done the right thing, uh, but they, they, they got off to why they was doing the right thing. They left their first love. They took him for granted is what they did. I believe that's simply all it was. And I do believe this. I believe that maybe after this letter was written, as soon as they got it, they said, we got to check up and repent and get back. Now, I don't know that. I'm just going off speculation there, but I believe that this church, and hopefully that they did, the church of Ephesus, if I'm not mistaken now, and I'm going off of memory, so don't hold me to it, I'm almost sure this was the church that Jesus' mother attended. Am I right there, Jason? Do you remember that? The church of Ephesus? Somebody at that time very... Uh, that, that you would understand be very famous in the gospel time period. And I'm pretty sure of that. I'm not, uh, we, you don't hold me to it, like I said, but I'm pretty sure that this was the church that Jesus' mother attended. And I, 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 she, I know she attended one of them. I believe it was her. Anyway, we can check on that. But what I'm saying is this was a church that was very, very, uh, uh, they'd done things the right way. Hey, man, they were very important in the community. They was able to discern. They has born and has patience at, for my name's sake. So they was doing things for the right reason. But they just got off as far as what that reason was. And in their hearts, they just got off. What they done just like us, they got busy with life. And they just started going through the motions. Hey, man, they showed up at the right time. They knew when to be there. They knew when to leave. They knew how to act. They done just like we do. Hey, man, but a lot of times we have to take a step back and remember why we're serving and who we're serving. Because if we don't, we'll let people, as we talked about this morning, we'll start pushing our buttons and get us off our game. Nehemiah never let that happen. So we talked about him this morning. Hey, man, the enemy come against him and tried to bring a false witness up and bring things up against him. And he said, uh-uh, I know what my job is. It was the same yesterday and it's the same today. To building the wall. First thing I want you to see out of this, the active church with trouble within this church. First thing I want you to see, the Lord's commendation of this church. He said, I know thy works. He commends them for labor. Not saved, but uh, not saved, but by not saved by works, but works follow salvation. Amen. So he and that's what salvation brings. You don't work to be saved, but you work because you've been saved. Amen. And I believe that. He was uh, he commended them for their patience. He commended them for opposing evil. He commended them for exposing false teachers. And what a great benefit that would be, by the way. Say somebody's going around and they didn't know no better. And they've been listening to this guy. And he's a false teacher. And this church, one that was able to discern because they had a discerning spirit, the Holy Spirit living in them, and they were studied up and they understood what they ought to be listening to, and this church here, uh, they look at it and they say, uh, he comes in there and they call him out. Then to everybody else, they said, man, I'm glad you found that out because we didn't know. There's a lot of churches, you go in and preach anything because they just don't know. They've never been taught. They never studied for themselves. And that's what happened right here. But this was a church that was on our game. If you speak to a preacher, he let you know if they was real or not. Amen. And he better be real if he went through here because based on what this scripture is teaching us, uh, he, would, he called them, said that they, which they say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars. They would call them out and say, don't let that guy be teaching. He's a false apostle. Amen. So they were a bold church. So therefore, they had a lot of good things going for them. He commended them for exposing false teachers. He commended them for remaining steadfast. They were consistent. And what they did. Number two thing I want you to see, the Lord's criticism of the church. Not only their commendation of the church uh, where he commended them, but their, the Lord's criticism of this church. It says, thou hast left thy first love. You no longer love me as you once did. Is what I believe 
uh, uh, the thought, one of the thoughts would be there. What happens when you love Christ? You love to think about Him. You love to hear about Him. You love to read about Him. You love to talk about Him. You love to talk to Him. And you love to walk with Him. Amen. When you love Christ, or when you're in, when you're in love with Christ. When your love cools, all the above are less important to you. As I said, anybody's been married any length of time, and I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, we was, uh, I can't remember who I was talking to this week, and I got tickled. Uh, one of the guys at work was talking about our wives, and he said, he said, you remember when you was dating, and you, you'd be go to get off the phone with her, and she'd say, I love you, and he'd say, I love you too. And he'd say, okay, you hang up first. You know, all remember them days? I told him, I said, it's why it'd be hard for me to start dating now because if the woman on the other end said, you hang up first, I'd say, all right, click. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be like I was, I don't think, when I was a teenager. But you know them years and you're like, and you can't stay away from each other and, and, you, and you love each and you're in love and it hurts your belly when she ain't around or he ain't around. But as the years go on, that same person that you fell in love with might still be there. All the same qualities, all the same. Matter of fact, it just gets better with age, so wisdom and all that, and you grow with this person, and you love them more probably than you ever have, but if you don't ever tell them or show them, then it's like you're taking them for granted. And that's what Jesus said. It's not that uh, we don't love our wives or we don't love our husbands. It's just like we may not show them as much because they should know. It's like one guy said, do you ever tell your wife you love her? And he said, well, I told her when we got married that I'll be good. Yeah, well, you, you better tell her more than that because she probably don't remember. But amen, but what I'm saying is uh, you have to, at time, you work on that relationship and you get back to that and say, honey, I'm sorry, I, I, I've kind of drifted. And, you know, men and will say that from time to time and I'll just top her and tell her I love her or, or whatever because I hadn't told her in a while. And that's what you got to do. And that's all Jesus is saying here. He said, hey, you just drifted away from me. You're doing all the right things for the right reasons, but, but you're doing things uh, and you're not remembering why you're doing what you're doing. You left your first love. You've drifted away from me. And that's what he's telling this church here. He wanted them, he wanted their, his relationship. To me, his way he looked at it. The relationship between them and him was more important than all this other stuff. Here's why. Because all this other stuff will fall suit if we keep the main thing the main thing. If we stay in love with him and keep him, uh, you know, keep the love between us and him uh, anew, afresh and anew every day as you get up, what happens is all these other things will still work out. You don't have to try to do this stuff. It'll just happen. Amen. And that's what he's saying. He said, quit going through the motions. You've left your first love, so you've got to return where that was. You love to walk with him. When love cools, like I said, all those things, uh, to hear about him, to think about him, to talk about him, all those things cool off. They become less important. Church services are only habit. Amen? Church ser services only become habit. We've been guilty of that, I know. The Bible is neglected. Prayer becomes but a form of talking. Service is mechanical. Witnessing ceases. Remember when maybe when you first got saved or when you're in love with Jesus and you're thinking about Jesus all the time and listening to preaching or listening to gospel songs or whatever, Back if you don't do that anymore, if you used to, you can't help but talk about him because that's all that's in your head and in your heart. It's what you feed is what you, what's going to come out, hey man, and that's true. And when you feed on that all the time, when somebody comes around, you're always excited because you just heard something or you just read something or you just, uh, you, you're just you thinking about something and, and therefore uh, you look at it. And when people come around, you say, oh, hey, did you hear this? You're always talking about Jesus. Why? Because you stay close to him. You're What you're doing, you're working on that relationship between you and your heavenly father. So important. Last but not least, the Lord's cure for the church, I want you to see. He said, remember from whence, from whence ye have fallen. The thrill of new life. The joy of service. He said, when you remember, you got to repent. So you remember, you repent, turn around, 
Make an about face. That's what that means. It's a change of mind. It's a change of heart. It's a turn from the way you were doing it and start doing it another way. Hey, man, it's an about face. And last but not least, you got to, after you remember and you repent, you got to return to your first love of Christ. That's the most important thing. We can't forget that, to keep the main thing, the main thing. That would have been a good title for the message, keeping the main thing, the main thing. Let's bow our heads. Calling individuals to remember, to repent, and to return. Rewards for those who respond. As he says in verse, uh, the rewards for those who respond, verse number seven, he said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. Remember why you do what you do. Go ahead, Daniel.